If you've ever enjoyed the sight of polar bears, this story is for you, because you're about to see them as you never have before. For this, you can thank the ice-breaking work of John Downer, the British filmmaker who spent two years getting to know them. It wasn't easy. Polar bears frequent the most forbidding part of the planet. It's tough to get there, and once you do, it's really cold. Polar bears are also difficult to spot. White on white is not easy on the eye. In the past, they'd been filmed from a distance, which is advisable. Polar bears are dangerous. But as we reported last March, John Downer wanted to get up close and survive. So he needed new tricks. He came up with forms of surveillance which could make the CIA proud. Downer's film, Spy on the Ice, will air on Animal Planet on October 4th. He will take you inside their world. Tonight, we'll show you how he does it. The story will continue in a moment. You may have seen polar bears shot like this before, but have you ever seen them like this? Close up, intimate, just doing what polar bears do. Sometimes, even treading on thin ice. Probably not. And that's because they're not being shot at the end of a long lens right now. They're being filmed by spies. For the last two years, they've been under constant surveillance, scrutinized by snowballs, by mounds of snow, by tiny icebergs drifting in the seas. They're cameras, of course, but the nearest cameraman can be miles away. We're up in the Arctic Circle, chillingly close to the North Pole. We've traveled to remote places before, but never on an icebreaker. We were invited on board by John Downer, the Englishman who has revolutionized the way wildlife films are made with espionage, cunning espionage. What's the idea of a spy cam? Well, the thing about the spy cam is it, it actually gets you close to the animals. You're in the scene, you're in the picture. You're picking up a magic that you cannot capture with an, a, a, a normal camera. It is like a secret world. If the lion is the king of the jungle, then the polar bear is the king of the ice. He's at the top of the food chain, here on the top of the world. And he's revered by the few people who live in the Arctic Circle. They call him God's dog, or the ever-wandering one because he can roam hundreds of miles searching for seals. That is, on ice. But in summertime, there's less ice. So some bears get stuck on dry land, where they have to scavenge to stay alive. Downer and his crew plant their spy cams wherever they think a hungry chap might pass by. They do it quickly, because it's dangerous up here. It's illegal to leave your boat without an armed escort. We had two. A polar bear sees something on two legs and thinks, oh, that might be food. Everything it sees that moves in this environment could be food. And of course, food is everything in this, this, in this world. The cameras are triggered by motion. And there isn't much motion up here that isn't a polar bear. The remains of this whale carcass looked appetizing. Bears were bound to come around, even though there wasn't much meat left on the bone. Let's tuck back in there. You want, you want rotten rocks? Yeah, that's perfect. I, I, I think this is a good shot. It's all in the positioning. What you need more than anything else is a wild imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wild. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, some um, commitment to to have a mad dream and then carry it through. But not mad enough to hang around very long. Bears are rather rapid. They can do 100 meters in nine seconds. That means they can outrun the world's fastest sprinter. Well, can you see the polar bear? It's not far. Now, at this time of year, would this polar bear presumably be hungry? Very hungry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping an eye on him. And he's <laughs> keeping an eye on us. I mean, that's fine at that distance. That is as long as there isn't another bear behind us. Well, there are other bears behind us. <laughs> but, and we can't see them. We've got to go. 
today. Yeah, both covered. He's looking right at us now. Yeah, I think now's the time to get... Is, the distance is getting a little bit close, so I think we need to get back on board now. Back in the safety of the mothership, Downer's technical wizard, Jeff Bell, is innovating by the minute. Bell had been a model airplane designer for years when Downer realized how useful his talents and his toys could be in the espionage game. You've used the word toys, mm. and you started doing this when you were how old? Seven? Seven, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the only difference, as you know, between men and boys is the price of the toys. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's what we do. We're hobbyists and gone into it professionally. Bill has just perfected what he calls an iceberg cam, which does double duty, above the water and down below. The camera catches the action when a bear goes under, feet last, to check out that whale carcass. It's so good, isn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic. <laughs> Here she comes. Comes and feeds. Oh, wow. No. This is one cool bear. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Very Done nice exactly bear. what we wanted. <laughs> Absolutely on, on time. Exactly what the bear wanted, too. Lunch. What her cub seemed to want was to be on camera. Now, don't tell me she's not mugging for the camera. <laughs> Look at that. Full face shot. Relaxed. I wonder how they'd react if they could see themselves on television. I'm sure it'd be a very place to be on 60 Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> very proud. <laughs> this is great. They're so relaxed around it. It's a very, you know, it's a fantastic scene. But Mama Bear doesn't seem to think so. She takes out her disappointment on the hapless camera. This film, Spy on the Ice, is the latest in Downer's 30-year career, which began with the BBC's Natural History Unit. First project, he wanted to capture what it's like to be a bird. That meant flying with one. So he trained a duck from the time its egg hatched to think of him as its father. You were the daddy of a duck. I was the, I was the daddy. How did I was the daddy. I had to take it to the office. It came <laughs> with me as it was gr growing up. It would be in the car when I was driving along. It would even go to dinner parties. I always <laughs> had to go everywhere with this duck. Eventually, he took the duck and his camera 200 feet up in a parasail. He had never flown before. And when we were up at altitude, I released this duck. And within a few seconds, it formated next to me and was flying alongside me, literally a foot away from my head. John, you flew with a duck. Yep, one of my first filming experiences was flying with a duck. And I think very early on in my career, I started to realize, you know, what it's like to be that animal. What's it like to be a lion? Downer explored that in his film Spy in the Den. The stars were not only lions, but Sir David Attenborough, the world's most respected naturalist. This, as you may have guessed, is no ordinary film about lions. Some of its sequences were gained in the most extraordinary way. This remote camera, disguised as a boulder, has been able to go into the very heart of the pride. How about tigers, the most elusive of predators? Downer got to four cubs when they were 10 days old. It was the first time anyone had filmed them that young. There they were with their protective mother, who just wouldn't let go. And Downer wouldn't let go either. He was with them to celebrate their first birthday and stayed with them for the next three years. How did he do it? by enlisting the ultimate all-terrain camera vehicles, elephants. He mounted trunk cams and tusk cams. And the tigers were not at all self-conscious because elephants have always been part of their world. And in Downer's world, the gravest sin is to do something that does not astonish his viewers. It requires a lot of patience and a lot of tape. He shoots 17 hours of material for every minute that makes the cut. Every time I make a film on a new subject, I want to uh, interpret that animal in a way that hasn't been before. And I, that's really what drives me. I think if you're approaching a subject afresh, 
and really trying to get new insights. You can never bore the audience. Africa's famous wildebeest migration has been filmed hundreds of times, but not with a croc cam or a skull cam or a dung cam. That's right, an HD camera smothered in dung. Somebody had to do it. How about the toy man, Jeff Bell? Jeff had to spread the dung on the camera. Yes. Did he get a bonus for that? <laughs> it's all part of the job. Downer says his toughest job has been right up here because of the hostile environment and the fact that his subjects are so hard to find. But on the bridge of the icebreaker, he and producer Phil Dalton showed us what might just be the most extraordinary polar bear sequence ever filmed. The snow cams were placed outside a den where a bear stays for six months to give birth to and rear her cub. Then Dalton went away, far away. It was about 60 miles away. 60 miles? Yeah. You were 60 miles away from that camera? Well, this was being filmed, yeah. I mean, we had no idea what was going on, really. When he retrieved the camera 10 days later, this is what Dalton saw. The snow mysteriously being wiped off the lens. How? With a paw. There's the cup. There's the cup. Oh. The first glimpse of the cup. This is and the cub's first look at the world. It is. His brave new white world. We couldn't have dreamt that we would get something like this. Um, because here we've got this wonderful situation. Here the mother right in the camera. The, cam the, the bears seem to be doing the camera work. And uh, the, uh, what happens is actually quite magical because you feel you really are alone with these bears um, in the moment. Yeah. She pushes the camera down the hill, then. Eh? <laughs> well, so miraculously, the camera is <laughs> still in the middle of frame. Right. Yeah. And, miraculously, they not only follow the camera, but the mother reframes the shot. For me, this has a certain magic and innocence about it, and the way the cub and mum are just there, alone with the cameras in their world, and <laughs> there's little glimpses. And now they're, they're wandering off, and this is the start of their journey, you know, which is going to be thousands of miles. Probably never to be seen again by the likes of us. They'll just keep wandering, roaming on the ice, as long as it's there. <laughs>